Hello lovely, welcome back to Alakioge YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're learning how to make these two pieces. So we have kimono shirt and also a free shirt. So it's just a casual wear and I make mine to be really free. So if you don't want yours to be as free as mine, so you can adjust your measurements. Like where I added extra inches to mine, you can choose to add it to yours or not add it to yours. So without further ado, let's get right into the video so to start off i'll first be drafting the pattern for the shirt and the length of the shirt is 23 inches so uh, it's 22 inches then i added one inch for seam allowance then i mark my shoulder to waist that's 16 inches that's the first line there after so i measure shoulder to waist of 16 inches that's what i'm marking right now and then the length of the shirt is 23 inches. This is including the seam allowance for the arm too. So you can make yours as long as mine or you make it as short. So just work with your preferred measurements. So this is the length of the shirt that I want. You can make yours longer or shorter than mine. So the next thing I'm going to mark here. So I'll mark 2 inch, 0.5 inches away from the center of the pattern and this 2.5 inch will serve as the allowance for the button hole and the uh, spurs for the button to sit on the shirt. So you have to mark 2.5 inches away at the center there. So it will serve as where you're going to insert the button hole and also your button on the shirt. So make sure this is done at the center so once i'm done marking the 2.5 inches i'm just going to go ahead and fold that 2.5 inches away you know i'll have to fold it away because that will not be part of the measurement i'll be marking so i'm just going to fold it away in order to continue with my measurements so the next thing i'm going to do now is going to mark half of my shoulder measurements my shoulder is 14 so 14 divided by 3 cost to 7 then you know this is a kimono shirt we're going to be adding the sleeve extension to the shoulder right there so the sleeve extension that i mark here is five inches yours might be longer than this depending on how long you want your sleeve to be so just add it to the it from where you mark your shoulder measurement and from where you mark your sleeve extension come down by two inches for the shoulder slope and the next thing i'm marking right now is three by I'm just marking three inches by seven. So you know this is a real neckline shirt. So I mark by seven by eight inches. So I want it to be really wide. If you look at my neckline, it was really wide. So if you don't want yours to be as wide as mine, you can use seven or six inches. And from where I mark the three by eight inches, I come down by marking my shoulder slope right there. So the next thing I'll mark right now is my arm o measurement my arm o is 7.1 to calculate your arm o right is right there on the screen and after marking that you're just going to square down that line and that line will serve as your chest line so like that so measure whatever you have on the upper part right there i'm going to measure it on your chest line here so whatever you have on your line at the shoulder area is just going to mark on your chest line there and you connect your line from the shoulder slope straight to the chest line so i label this so that we're going to know what which of the lines i'm talking about so the next thing i'm going to mark now is the quarter of my bro's circumference my bro's is 34 so 34 divided by 4 equals to 8.5 then i added one inch for ease you know this is a free shirt i added one inch for ease and also one inch for seam allowance then on the my waist too I measure quarter of my waist circumference. My waist is 28, so 28 by 4 equals to 7 plus 1 inch for ease and 1 inch for seam allowance. Then on the hip line, that's the seam allowance, that the length of the shirt. I mark quarter of my hip circumference, that was 9 plus 1 inch for ease and 1 inch for seam allowance. Then I connected the lines together like so. So now, to create the arm or curve for the for this shirt, I just come down by two inches from the chest line, and then I use my curve ruler to make a curve. This we enable to create the armor curve. Now this is a kimono, and we're not going to just be making the normal 
ammo curve that we do so this kind of the ammo you're going to be doing for this and just measure between 2 to 2.5 inches then you just make your curve to where you mark your line there and that's it for the shirt so that is all for our shirt right here so i'm just going to cut off the excess paper that i have here is this is just simple there's not too much allowance there's no need for that because it's a free shirt so we're not adding that to it so it's just this simple to make this so this is the drafting so i'm just going to go ahead and cut off my pattern so this is the front pattern and i'll be using the front pattern to cut the back pattern so here is my front pattern. so i'll get a fresh pattern paper and I'm just going to go ahead and place the front pattern on the back. So make sure you align this very well, that the center is meeting up at the center there. For the back there, the center is what, which is one that will be on foot. So that's why I put that in the allowance for the bottom hole and buttons there in the front. So that I'll be able to use this to cut the back. So for the back, I'm not just going to be making any markings there. I'll just use the front pattern to cut out the back pattern so I'm just going to go ahead and cut like so so the nice thing now the only thing that I'll do at the back now is to cut out the neckline you know the neckline for the back it will be different for the front so I'll just be using three by one you know I did three by eight at the front so for the back the back neck will be high so I'm just going to be doing three by one inch for the neckline for the back this is just a simple one here so i'm just going to go ahead and just mark my neckline of three by one which i'm doing right here and that is all for the pattern drafting for the shirt this is simple it's uh, just a free something so i'm just going to cut off the pattern paper right there so this is the back right here i'm just going to label it this is the back and I'll be cutting the back on foot and I'll get the front pattern. This is the front pattern and I'll be cutting two pieces because the uh, front we have bought in at the front there. So I will set this aside and work on the shirt. So here's the pattern paper we're using for the shirt and the length of the shirt I'm making is 19 inches but I added one inch for hemi allowance. That's why I marked 20 inches here i'm just going to square down the line right here so after that the next thing i'm going to measure is my waist to hip the, my waist to hip for my shot is seven inches because i usually measure from where i place my shot to the fullest part of my hip so that is why my full shot is seven inches so i'm going to mark seven inches and then i'm going to mark my crotch length my crotch length is nine inches to get your crotch length just divide your hip circumference divided by four my hip is 36 so this is where my focus to nine that's why i mark nine inches or you can just measure two or 2.5 inch from your waist to the hip measurement so i'm going to measure this is the hip line and the second one is a crotch line like that so on the hip line, I'm going to mark out of my hip circumference. My hip is 36, so 36 by 4 equals to 9. Then I added 1 inch to that, that's why I marked 10. Then on the crotch line, I'm going to mark half of my thigh circumference. My thigh circumference is 22, so 22 divided by 2 equals to 11 plus 1 inch, that's why I'm marking 12. So the tie, my tie circumference here is really wide. Like I take the right tie, my tie circumference loosely, not tight or fit because the shot is free. So the, your measurement is going to be determined by how free you want your shot to be. So then, so whatever I have on my hip line is what I mark on the waistline up there. You know, on my hip line, I have 10 inches there, and that's what I mark on that line up there. And I connected it to the hip line. And that is what I'm going to just mark there. So you're going to measure whatever you have on your crotch line. So, and at the hem here, you're going to move up one inch from what you have there. You know, I have 12 inches on my crotch line. So that means on the same line here on the m line here i marked 11 inches i removed one inch for that so if you want your 
shorts to be tapered in like about three you can remove two inches from that so this is the front pattern and i'm just going to go ahead and cut it so i've written my rotation on this that means this is the front pattern and i'm going to be cutting two pieces so i just label it that here i'm just going to go ahead and cut out my pattern so after cutting out the front pattern i'm going to get a fresh pattern paper and paint the front pattern to it this is what i'll be using to cut the back pattern so make sure once you are painting your paper to the new paper make sure you leave out excess at the side and also at the top because we are adding excess to it so now at the top of the pattern paper here at the waist here for the back you know for a short or a pant you need to add extension so i added two inches up there this is needed so you need to add two inches extra at the top there so from the top where you mark the two inches you need to do this to connect it back to the side so that means after you've marked the two inches extension you're going to connect it to the side so at where we make the extension you're going to come out by 1.5 inch so i mark 1.5 inch on that side so and i connected the extension there and at the crotch line here the up line rather i'm going to come out by 2.25 inches then on the crotch line you're going to come out by three inches so that's how you're going to make your extensions at the back there so this make sure you remember all the necessary at the top there will come out by 1.5 at the hip line 2.25 and at the crotch line 3 inches so make sure you take note of the measurement and then you connect with your curve like so so i'm just using my curve ruler to connect it just like you're seeing it right here so i just use my ruler to just connect the line to extend the line on the crotch line and also on the hip line too so just like we did for the front you're going to measure whatever you have there on your crotch line then you remove one inch or you remove two inches depending on how wide you want it and also even if you want you might just leave it straight down like that so you just get to form like a short palazzo like that so that is it i remove one inch from what i have on my crotch line then i connect it to the front pattern that was used then i connected it like that can you see so that is all for the short making this is also simple like this so the next i'm going to do that i'm just going to cut off the excess paper that i have right there so that is all for the short making we have made the shirt and also here is the shirt so the next thing i'll do now is to place my pattern on my fabrics and cut out my pattern my fabric so this is the shirt i'm just going to go ahead and cut it off like that so i've cut it already like this placing the pattern on top and cutting out the fabric so then this is the shirt i'm just going to place it right there on it and cutting off the excess that i have right there so this that is all for the making of the shirt and the shirt so join me in my next tutorial where i'll be showing us how to sew these together so if you're interested in seeing the video of how i joined the shirt and also the shirt together please check the next tutorial it's going to drop right after this so thank you very much for watching i really appreciate you if you are new here and you have not subscribed please kindly click on the right button down below to subscribe to this channel and also check out my all the amazing tutorials so thank you i really appreciate your support catch you in my next tutorial bye